A new book paints an intimate portrait of a president fighting for his job and his legacy against a special prosecutor who never had prosecuted but was going after the leader of the free world. Correspondent James Rosen looks inside. A decade in the making, Ken Gormley's The Death of American Virtue boasts interviews with all the major players, including 50 hours with Kenneth Starr and three sessions with Bill Clinton. And the former president remains fighting mad about the impeachment battle, which he called a partisan hit job. Yeah, I will always have an asterisk after my name, Mr. Clinton told Gormley, but I hope I'll have two asterisks. One is they impeached him, and the other is he stood up to them and beat them, and he beat them like a yard dog. Mr. Clinton derided his old adversaries as crusaders who believed God was on their side. Side. Ken Starr was their errand boy, he said, and he danced to their tune just as hard as he could dance. Asked about the book today and whether he bears any remorse for his own role, Mr. Clinton said he hasn't read the book. But I expressed my remorse at the time. My remorse does not have anything to do with whether what was done was legal or constitutional. No serious objective observer doubts that there was rampant, flagrant abuse of power and that a lot of people who should have been coming on it were stunningly silent. The prosecutors have power and they should be uh, called to account for that power, but that having been said and mindful of the criticisms, I think that the investigation was conducted with honor and with integrity. Gormley faults former independent counsel Ken Starr for moving too slowly and for having previously provided legal counsel to the lawyers representing Paula Jones, the Arkansas woman whose sexual harassment lawsuit against President Clinton brought to light his affair with White House intern Monica Lewinsky. Mr. Clinton on the day before he left office formally acknowledged that his testimony about that affair was, quote, evasive and misleading and paid a $25,000 fine. Ironically, Gormley writes, the prosecutor's shift away from the Whitewater real estate probe to the Lewinsky affair likely spared then First Lady Hillary Clinton from an indictment alleging perjury before the grand jury, a document author Gormley uncovered in the archives. It was somewhere it wasn't supposed to be. I was able to read it. And what was on it? It turned out to be a draft indictment of both Hillary Clinton and Webster Hubble dealing with uh, Whitewater related matters. In her dozens of hours of interviews with Gormley, Monica Lewinsky emphatically denied she came to Washington bent on seducing the president. Not at all, she laughed. In fact, I didn't find him attractive at first. I don't think he looks good on TV. In Washington, James Rosen, Fox News.